seven two days star here out in the walking vlog uh you, shall we play a game uh this is the game in light of a theory like evolution that explains so many things makes so many predictions and has been vindicated time and time again uh, but if you talk to creations of course creationists of course they'll be in denial of that however what would you expect if you're making a model of a very complex system what would you expect a very very complex system would you expect that the model would be as complex as the phenomenon that it's describing like initially would you expect it to be that is B letter B um, equally complex or C, would you expect it to be, at least initially, less complex than the phenomenon that it's described, describing? Correct answer? C. Necessarily, if you're describing, starting from zero knowledge of something, and working your way up, you will have a model that is less complex than the phenomenon that it's describing. Now, that could still be useful, because you could be like Newton, and I'm going to go up here, so there's a truck coming. You could be like uh, Sir Isaac Newton, who had a, a model that worked fairly well for most practical situations, but it didn't explain everything, and it required later that Einstein would add his element to it. And perhaps someday soon, we're going to have yet another element added to it when we reconcile quantum physics. Let me get down now and gravity. Now, now that we've established we do need, so given this idea that the model will be less complex than the phenomena, the complex phenomena which is trying to describe what should we expect? Should we expect that we should know everything at this point? A, that's A, should we expect that there will be gaps in our knowledge? Or C, Potato! I just thought I'd throw that in. Obviously, we should expect to find gaps in our knowledge. So, given that there will be gaps, what can we conclude? Given gaps, we can conclude either A, more research needs to be done, B, there's a magical man in the sky who cares about the length of the skin on the end of our penis. Or C, potato. It didn't work the second time either, did it? You have to expect that there's going to be those gaps, and if you have those gaps, it doesn't tell us anything about the truth or falsity of some other theory. Uh, it just means that more research has to be done. It doesn't falsify it, just the fact that it doesn't explain everything. We don't have a comprehensive explanation of all natural phenomena. Uh, that's just really too much to expect, and to make woo-woo of it is uh, a little bit of a dishonest tactic. We call that making an appeal to incredulity. Some people call it uh, an appeal to ignorance, where we find ourselves in a situation where there's a phenomenon that we don't understand, and so we conclude the fact that it, we don't understand it gives support to some other argument, and that's invalid. But I would hold that's exactly what creationists are doing every time they point at something like photosynthesis or uh, abiogenesis and say, look, you guys don't have an explanation, therefore my need, of, need for closure, it's a psychological phenomenon, says that we have to have an explanation, and even though I don't have really good evidence for this explanation, I'm more comfortable to accept that explanation rather than to go on with the uncomfortable position of, well, I don't really know how abiogenesis got going. And uh, isn't that an interesting phenomenon? Thoughts for the evening. 72 Day Star, out.